Hi, in this video I'll show you how to make this 3000 watts power inverter with just a handful of components. The circuit is very simple. This is the complete schematics of the project and I have also designed a PCB and the final board should look as shown. It's a very tiny board measuring about 6 cm by 14.5 cm. The circuit is spanned by the SG3524 PWM IC. The AC is very similar to the SG3525 because they also share most of the parameters and the pinouts. To power the project you need 24 volts DC and ensure that the voltage supply can deliver more than 125 amperes if you want 3000 watts output from an input voltage source of 24 volts. You can also power it from a 12 volt system but the wattage will be about half of that. F1 is a fuse rated for at least 120 amperes and the down D1 will protect the circuit from reverse polarity. In case this happens, the down D1 will conduct Basically, you should circuit the fuse F1 across the input power source and cause it to burn, and this will cut off the rest of the circuit. To power the IC, you need about 12 volts, so you need a regulator to step down the 24 volts to about 12 volts. You can use the popular RM7812, which can deliver 12 volts at a current of about 1 ampere, which is more than enough to power the IC and drive the MOSFETs. C5 is the main input filtering capacitor and it's an electrolytic capacitor written for 4700 microfarads and at least 50 volts DC. You can use more of these parallel together to stabilize the input voltage further. So the IC will take in 24 volts and give 12 volts to power the SD3524 and C6 will filter and stabilize the voltage supply to the IC. The AC pinouts and the connections are shown on the circuit. It has 16 pins and it comes in a dual line package as shown. Pin 1 and 2 make up the inputs of the air amplifier. Pin 1 is the inverting input and pin 2 is the non inverting input. With this, you can monitor the fine output footage and provide feedback. But in this case, I did not intend for output footage feedback, so I have disassembled the air amplifier by pulling down the inverting input to ground and pulling up pin 2 to a voltage above 0 volts, in this case 5 volts generated by the reference pin 16 through a resistor R2 which is 10 kilo ohm. Pin 3 is the oscillator output because we do not need this for this project you can leave it as connected. Pin 4 and 5 can be used for current sensing and regulation but in this case just disable them by pulling both of them down to ground as shown. The frequency is set by the timing resistor R1 and the timing capacitor C1. These are connected to RT, pin 6 and CT, pin 7 respectively as shown. R1 is 100 kilo ohms and C1 is 100 nanofarads or 0.1 microfarads. With these two values, the oscillator output frequency will be about 130 Hz. The final output at E2 and E1 will be half of that which will give you 65 Hz, which is quite okay. The frequency formula is 1.3 out of R1 multiplied by C1. Pin 8 is ground, which is the power ground and the logical ground for the circuit as shown. Pin 9 provides compensation at a specific frequency. For all frequencies, you can just connect it to ground through a small capacitor as shown. C2 is 10 nanofarads. Pin 10 is the shutdown pin. With this pin, you can enable or disable the output. When it's pulled down to ground, the output transistors are enabled, and when it's pulled up to a logic 5 volts, the output will be disabled, so connected to ground as shown. Pin 11 is the emitter output of the first transistor, and pin 12 is the corrector of the first transistor. Pin 13 is the corrector of the second transistor, pin 14 is the emitter of the second transistor, and pin 15 is VCC or the positive voltage supply to the IC as shown. You need to pull up the open correctors pin 12 and 13 to VCC as shown. The MOSFETs gates are being driven by the outputs at the emitters pin 11 and 14. Because you are dealing with low frequencies, you do not need a dedicated gate drive IC. The SD3524 can deliver sufficient current to switch the MOSFETs at 65 Hz without a problem. When the circuit is powered, the outputs at E1 and E2 will be a series of square wave passes and the outputs will be complementaries of each other. 
meaning that whenever 11 is high, the output at E14 will be low and vice versa. These outputs will be used to drive the respective MOSFETs. For the MOSFETs, all the MOSFETs from Q1 to Q12 are IRF3205. These are good power MOSFETs and one MOSFET can handle about 98 amperes and a drain source voting rating of about 55 volts. The practical power rating of a single IRF3205 power MOSFET is about 600 watts. So if you power about 6 of them, you should be capable of handling more than 3000 watts without a problem. And don't forget to mount all the MOSFETs on good heat sinks. The outputs from pin 11 and pin 14 are connected to the respective gates of the MOSFETs as shown. One side is made up of the MOSFET Q1 through to Q6 and the other side Q7 to Q12 as shown. Each MOSFET also has a gate source distant to the resistor which is 10 kilo ohms and at least a quarter watt. The gate drive resistors are also written for 1 kilo ohms and at least a quarter watt. Let's say in the first stage you have a high output at E1 or pin 11 of the IC and so this will pull up the gates of the MOSFETs Q7, Q8, Q9, Q10, Q11 and Q12 to about VCC and cause them to turn on. When this happens, the MOSFETs conduct and this creates a current path flow from the positive supply through the right hand side of the primary winding through the MOSFETs and to ground or the negative rail as shown. This meets the first half cycle. After some time, the output at pin 11 will go low and that at pin 14 will go high. The MOSFET Q7 through to Q12 will turn off. When the output at pin 14 goes high, now the gates of the MOSFETs Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4, Q5 and Q6 are pulled up to about VCC and this will cause them to turn on. When this happens, this creates a current path flow from VCC or the positive input through the left hand side of the primary winding through the MOSFETs and to the negative rail as shown. This makes the second half cycle. After some time, the output at pin 14 will go low and the output at pin 11 will go high and the process will repeat over and over again 65 times per second. The output of the inverter is a modified sine wave with a small end time in between the half cycles. For the power transformer, for 3000 watts you need a 3000 volt ampere power transformer. This you can salvage from a microwave oven <laughs> written for 3000 watts or from an old welding machine. This should work well because they are written for rook frequencies. The turns ratio between the primary and the secondary is about 1 is to 1 is to 10 for an input voltage of 24 volts and an output AC voltage of 240 volts. For 12 volts you need a ratio of 1 is to 1 is to 20. On the input of the transformer, I've included a simple SNAMBA arrestor network made up of the capacitor C3, C4, R27 and R28 and also C7 and C8 as shown. Whenever the MOSFETs are switching off, there's possibility of a voltage spike being generated across the primary side of the transformer. When this happens, the capacitor C3 and C4 will turn on and this basically will connect the voltage spike across the primary winding and short it across the primary winding. The excess energy is used for changing the capacitor C3 and C4 and this is dissipated by the resistors R20 and R27. C3 and C4 are anywhere from 100 to 330 nanofarads. The resistors R27 and R28 are 47 ohms and at least 3 watts. You can also include the capacitor C8 and C7 as shown. These are 100 nanofarads. And also the capacitor C7, C8, C3 and C4 are non-polarized. Ensure that they are good capacitors and can handle the excess heat that might be generated. The PCB layout is as shown. Here you have your input, battery input, this is the fuse, the bulk filtering capacitor, the IC and its basing circuit, the regulator for the IC. These are the transistors on one side and the transistors on the other side. These are the gate distance resistors and the gate drive resistors as shown and also on the other side. This is the connection to the transformer. The red line shows the copper top or basically a jumper from the positive terminal of the capacitor and to the middle terminal of the transformer as shown. And the final bond will look as shown. The input, 
the capacitor, the fuse, the IC regulator, the transformer connections, the transistors, and the various biasing resistors. And these are the number arrestor network of capacitors and resistors shown. And on the bottom side, it looks as shown. Thank you for watching and I hope you have enjoyed this video. If so, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Check out some of my other videos. Share, subscribe to my channel. Have a nice time and I'll see you in the next video.